guns blaze and the action-packed drama of gun smoke. Around Dodge City and in the territory out west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a state marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke is a story of the violence that moved west with young America. It's also my story. Me, Matt Morgan, U.S. Marshal. I'm the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. Come in. Ah, oh, it's you, Christy. Yeah, I was passing by, so I thought it'd save you walking up to the office for your mail. Oh, that was right thoughtful of you. Pleasure, Matt. Only hope they don't mean extra work for you. Mail is the usual run-of-the-mill assortment, except for one letter. Comes from a fella in the town of Silver Peak. It's uh, ooh, about 70 miles south of Dodge. It reads... It's turning into an outlaw's paradise here, Marshal, this town of Silver Peak. Once it was a quiet, law-abiding place. Now we're starting to draw gamblers and card shops, and rustlers and robbers... The sheriff ain't doing anything towards driving him on. Maybe he's turned yellow. But I figure he's being paid not to interfere. I reckon you ought to pay us a visit. Only I wouldn't come dressed like a marshal if I was you. You might put the sheriff on his guard. Come as a drifter. And you might look me up in the general store. And it's signed? Sean Werris. After a few of my experiences, I'm always weary that letters like this aren't a trap to lure me to outlaw towns just so fellas who have a grudge against me can try to gun me down. Well, I'll read it again, decide it's probably on a level, pack my saddle roll, ready to ride next morning. It's a three-day ride to Silver Peak, and it's late in the afternoon when I near the town wearing no badge, but instead a four-day growth of beard trying to hide my features doing my best to look like a drifter like the letter suggested. Right into the town proper, slowly looking well about me. Expecting trouble ready for it, but it doesn't come. In fact, most folks don't pay any attention to me at all. Those that do just throw a passing glance and go in their way. The center of the street is at a fancy looking new painted saloon, the Greenhorn. Well, a saloon's always a good place to get information and gossip. There's room at the hitching rail, so that's where I make for. What can I get you, Ann? You got a sarsaparilla? Are you joking, mister? Too thirsty to be joking. And what'll you have to quench it? Didn't I just ask for a sarsaparilla? You really want that stuff? <laughs> Holy Toledo. I better save it up before you change your mind. Yeah. Uh, I got a bottle or two somewhere. Never thought we'd ever sell any of it, though. Boss was thinking of donating it to a Christmas party for the kids. Uh, uh, yeah. Reckon this is it? <laughs> Dusty, ain't it? Thanks. Say, does that stuff put hair on your chest like you got on your face? Why don't you try some and find out, Joker? Well, I empty my glass and take a look around the saloon. The fellas standing around drinking, four card tables going. How many for you? Two. Okay. For you? Two. How about you? I'm sitting. Okay, I'll buy three. And it's the card tables that attract my attention. At least not the tables, but the four players at one table. 
particularly a fella dealing. I move across to the game. And bet five. Uh-huh. Yours and another ten, Joe. I'll uh, level it and add another five. Yeah, I can never deal myself a good hand. I'm through. Yeah, I'll see. No, you won't. I'll raise it another twenty. Harris? I'll double that. You count me out. Now, what are you doing, Letty? Hey, you must be holding well. I'll level and see it. No, 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 I won't. Just in case you're bluffing, I'll go another 20. I'm not bluffing, friend. It'll cost you another 10, 20, 30, 40, 1, 2, 43 dollars to look at me. Yep, I'm cleaned out. Must be some hand you got there, Harris. It's going to cost Lefty there $43 to see it. That's over 200 all told in the center. Look at him, Lefty. I'd like to see what he's got. You ought to know you dealt him. What do you mean by that, fella? I'll tell you when I see the hands. You accusing me of something? Maybe, when I see the hands. Why, you... Sit back down there. I got the draw on you. Hey, hey, you, hey, hey, you fellas stand around. Grab him. All of you keep back. Got any intentions of doing anything? Wait till the game's over. Okay, friend Lefty. $43 to see your opponent's hand. I guess with a hand like yours, you want to see it, huh? Sure. Hey, you are. Ah, uh, what do you got? Three queens. Full on aces. Well, let's see yours. <laughs> well, that's bad luck, friend. I got a pair of aces, too. Only I've got three kings to go with them. Bad luck. Looks like the center's mine. Was it bad luck on his part or good management on the dealer's part? Just what are you trying to say, stranger? I'm saying you, Mr. Dealer, and this fella here who just won the center are cheating. You put your gun away and say that. I will. After I explain to these folks what sort of tricks you've been up to. Oh, you must be mistaken, mister. The two of them aren't even friends. That's what they might tell you. But I've seen this stunt pulled off. And two fellas join a game at different times, pretend they don't know each other, but... Each one always deals the other a winning hand more times than not from the bottom of the deck. Well, well I'll never... Put touch. your gun away and say that, stranger. Yeah. We'll soon show you we're not cheating. You'll be sorry you poked your big head into this. Back up your words with gunplay. That's the way you want it. Stand aside, folks. I'm, I'm getting out of here. All right. My gun's back in its holster. Now, which one of you fancies he's got a faster draw, huh? You interfering sassy loudmouth. We both do! My hand! You bust my hand! It'll be all right. Thank the Lord above you're still alive. All right, quiet. Now, you two fellas who are playing with them. Yeah? Share the kitty between you, and I recommend you keep your eyes open for tricks like these fellas play in future, huh? Thanks, stranger. You'll be sorry for this, stranger. Hey, what's going on here? What was the shooting about? Well, the sheriff. Where's the body? There's no body. Holster your gun, friend. Come on, jump to it. That's the way. Now, what's going on it? Oh, jump the sassy coyote, Lefty. I couldn't do anything with my hand like it is. You better get this fella called himself Lefty to a dock sheriff and then lock him and his pal up for a few days. Who do you think you are to be giving me orders, stranger? They were cheating at cards. That's what he says, Sheriff. Who are you, stranger? Well, I guess you can call me Curly, Sheriff. Curly who? Just plain Curly. I haven't done anything wrong. And you'd better not while you're in this town. What's your business here? Oh, I'm just passing through. I intend to spend maybe a few days here and then head south. You a gunman? Nope. Well, I'm warning you. Just keep those Colts in their holsters while you're here. If you draw them, you'd better have a good reason. I'll make sure I have, Sheriff. Okay. Now, uh, keep the games friendly. Hey, you're not taking these cheats to the calaboose. I've only got your word against theirs. They were cheating, there's no doubt about that. Hey, you must think you got a fast time, mister. We've been playing here for two or three hours and no one accused us of cheating. And I guess I have got a fast eye. Now take them away out of my sight, Sheriff. If you're not going to lock them up, railroad them. 
I'll remind you again, stranger. I don't take orders from anyone. The only thing I'm going to do is give you some advice. I'm listening. If you want to live long here, you'd better tie a string around your tongue. Yeah, loudmouth. Come on, Lefty. I think we'll take a walk. That's a good idea. I don't reckon you want it here. You want to know something, stranger? Yep, a few things. Well, I'll tell you one of them. It's too late for you to take the sheriff's advice and tie a piece of string around your tongue. Meaning what? You ain't gonna live long anyhow. Come on, Lefty. Sure. I go back to the bar for another sarsaparilla. While I'm drinking it, I got things to think about. First of all, the look that came over the sheriff's face when he first saw who was holding at gunpoint. Yeah, it was a, a look of surprise. As if he'd known the men were cheats. Yet he defended them, dressed me down. Not that I didn't deserve it. Then secondly, I know I've seen the sheriff's face before many times. And I'm almost sure it was unwanted dodges. I wonder just what's going on. I wonder just what's going on. Why, how do you mean, Wolf? That fellow who meddled with us in the bar. Well, what about him? We are going to gun him down, ain't we? Uh-huh. But he set me thinking. He's about the right height, right build. Wears his guns the same way. Fast as lightning on the draw. Has the same thick face and cold eyes. As who? As Matt Morgan, the marshal of Dodge City. Matt Morgan? Hey, you don't figure this is a double cross, do you? It better not be. But just the same. Whether that fellow's Morgan or not, he's opened his mouth too wide and interfered too much already. Well, when are we going to get him? Just as soon as he steps out of that saloon. We can wait across the street in that alley. Then as soon as we hit him, run for the back street and into the yard behind the sheriff's office. But folks will know it was us who shot him. Not when their trustworthy sheriff gives us an alibi. Says we've been with him in his office all the time. Sarsaparilla decide maybe I should pay a call on Sean Wurris. The fellow sent me the letter asking me to come down here to Silver Peak. I stepped through the bad wings of the greenhorn onto the boardwalk. I'm down behind the water trough just outside the saloon. I can't see where the shots are coming from. Movement in the busy street is stopped. I can see folk edging close to the walls of buildings on either side. I lift my head above the trough, but it doesn't draw any more fire. Peer to the side, still no more shots. And the fellow comes edging along the boardwalk to me. Ah, uh, mister. Yeah? You can stand up now. The fellows who were blazing away at you are gone. They ran up that alley opposite. Just a trick to make me stand up? Why, no, mister. You tell them the truth, friend. They're gone. Okay, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> What's that shooting? Ah, oh, it's you again. Drop your gun, stranger. Uh, look, Sheriff, it weren't his fault. Drop him, I tell you. Did I tell you to keep your guns holstered? Who were you shooting at? You got it wrong, Sheriff. I didn't even get a shot in. He's speaking the truth, Sheriff. Hmm. You don't smell freshly shot off. Chambers are full, that should tell you. Then who was shooting at you? What's behind you, stranger, that you've caused so much trouble here in such a short time? I figured it was the two gamblers in the saloon. They beat it up that alley, Sheriff. Uh, any of you get a look at them? Oh, well, I bet so. Yeah, yeah. Then you uh, wouldn't rightly be able to recognize them. Mm, well, uh, look, one of them looked like that gambling fellow, Zimmerman. I don't know who the other fellow was, though. Well, uh, a lot of fellas in this town that look like Zimmer. Uh, what sort of clothes are they wearing? What colors? Most of you must have seen that. Well, uh, uh, one of them was wearing a black Stetson and a dark colored shirt, maybe green, and, and black pants. Yeah, that seems to fit one of the gamblers. I'll ask the questions and decide who they were, stranger. You're in my charge. If the pipe down, he'll end up in the calaboose. I haven't done anything, Sheriff. You can't have a charge against me. You're a disturber of the peace. Now, you better get on your horse and ride. I'll give you till sundown or you'll be in the calaboose. Oh, Sheriff, he didn't do nothing. He's a troublemaker. 
And Silver Peak's no place for one of them. It's a peaceful place, and it's going to stay that way. At the expense of law and order? Don't you talk to me like that, stranger. You've got till sunset to ride. Gosh, you mighty, Chef. You sure get off your horse easy these days. Any trouble from you, Milt Atkins, and you'll be riding with them. Uh, what about those two sneaking snipers, Sheriff? You gonna let them off scot-free? I'll, um, I'll uh, check up on them, uh, see if it was them. You only had yourself to blame anyway. You, you got their backs Only because up. they were cheating. And they probably thought they'd give you a scare. It's a nice kind of scare, trying to murder me. Oh, if they, they tried to murder you, you'd, you'd be dead by now. Whoever they were, they must have aimed to miss you, only scare you. The north trails, that end of town. The south, the other. Take the one you want before sundown. Sheriff marches off. The crowd goes about its business. I make my way down the boardwalk till I come to the general store owned by Sean Wurris. Well, like I told you in the letter, Marshal, the sheriff's letting gamblers and card shops get away with everything but murder. Mm -hmm. And once, I can remember, he wouldn't even let big-time gamblers near the town. But he's relaxed his laws awful sudden. You said something about rustling in your letter, huh? Yeah, there's a lot of it going on around these parts. Fifteen to twenty head from here and there every night, every second night. What's the sheriff doing about that? Oh, he promised he'll find out where they're going to, but he never has. Now, it's kind of strange that none's gone from Fred Ralston's head, though. Why is that? Well, of course, the sheriff's daughter, Julie, is about to marry Ralston's son. He's a very rich man, old Ralston. His son's going to come into a lot of money someday. Well, you don't suspect that the stolen beeves might be going into Ralston's hurry? Oh, no. Old Ralston's as straight as the day is long. Well, you've been around here a lot longer than I have, Mr. Worris. What do you suspect? Well, the way I see it, there's a group or a gang of fellas bribing or paying Sheriff Blake to overlook their crimes. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, he's turned crooked and is accepting the payments. Otherwise, maybe they're holding something over Did it. you say Sheriff Blake? Mm-hmm. Well, what's the matter? No, nothing. <clears throat> no, nothing at all. Uh, you said he has a daughter. Yeah, Julie. Has he any other children? Well, he'd tell he had a son, left these parts before I arrived, though, with the son. Mm -hmm. I often hear folks in the street asking the sheriff if he ever hears from him, though. Pat, I think his name was. I guess he'd be about 25, something like that. Yeah, he's older than Julie, I know he was. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks, Mr. Worris. Yeah, but, Marshal, I haven't told you anything about the robberies or the claim jumping or the stolen silver ingots. Well, you sure make the place sound lawless. I reckon you've told me enough. I don't know why other folks aren't like you, why they put up with the sheriff like he is, or why they haven't reported him. Well, they all believe he's doing his best, and that's all they expect. But, uh, well, I had a special reason for contacting you, Marshal. What was that? Well, you see, I got a daughter about the same age as the sheriff's daughter, Julie. Mm -hmm. And she's got no chance of marrying young Rolson unless... Well, unless it's proved Julie's father's crooked. Sour grapes, you might call it then, Mr. Wilson. No, no, not really, Marshal. I, I'd just like to be sure that young Rouson isn't marrying the daughter of a crook rather than my daughter. Well, I'll see what I can prove. Sean Wurris tells me the sheriff's surname is Blake. Rings a bell. So I go and see him. You're not gone yet, stranger? No, Sheriff. I won't have a word with you. I've said all I'm going to say to you. Sheriff, you see this badge? A marshal? Yeah, Morgan from Dodge. Now I'm closing the door. You're not Morgan from Dodge. I've seen pictures of him. Maybe you'd find it easier to recognize me if I didn't have this growth of beard. I'm carrying papers to prove it. Oh. What are you doing down here? I was called down here to investigate your behavior. My behavior? Yeah. I reckon that leaves a lot to be desired. What do you think you're up to, Sheriff? Who called you down here? That I'm not saying. But I'll tell you how much I know. You've got a son. He rides the Owl Hoot Trail. How do you know that? I've seen circulars and dodges with his name and picture on they get as far as Dodge? Yeah. I should have guessed so. 
I've been tearing up everyone I get here, trying to keep the news from reaching folks. Well, at first I thought you were the outlaw. Your son looks so much like you, only younger. Anyway, to continue, about four months ago, your attitude towards outlaws changed. You start to close your eyes to their activities. Why? Are you being paid to do so, or is somebody blackmailing you to keep your son's reputation in the quiet? Huh? Why would anyone want to blackmail me? Oh, I know your daughter's engaged to be married to a young fellow called Ralson. I don't think her dad would let the marriage go on if he knew your son was a bandit and a wanted murderer. All right, I'm a sheriff. Perfectly right so far. What else do you know? Nothing. Now I'm asking you to fill in everything else. I'm asking you to tell the truth. I appreciate difficulties a sheriff like you might encounter, and I'd kind of like to help you, if I can and if you want me to. I don't need no help, Marshal. Thanks all the same, but I sure feel a fool treating you like I did. Forget about that. But you got to understand that you was interfering in my plans. Mm -hmm. What plans were they? Plans to trap Zimmer and his gang. Trap him? <laughs> didn't look that way to me. I hope it didn't look that way to anybody. Zimmer, uh, he was a card player, wasn't he? Left his pal? Left his boss. Okay, go on. Well, Marshal, about four months ago, I was working late in the office here when Pat, my son, turned up. Zimmer was with him. Mm. I know all about Pat's antics since he left home, and I wanted to arrest him there and then, only Zimmer was smart. He'd planned things and struck a bargain. What sort of a bargain? He leads a gang, though nobody knows it. One of the cleverest gangs in the West. They have a finger in every pie. He's got men organized everywhere. Oh. Well, wherever there's a boom town like Silver Peak, now that the mining's really caught on, they move in. Some of them as teams of card shops. Others buy up ranches cheap when the owners get the craze to mine, and then they rustle from neighboring ranches to build up their herds. Others are organized into looting bands. Robbing the Wells Fargo coach, taking the ingots to Frisco. All sorts of tricks like that. And the amazing part about the organization, none of them ever let on that they know each other. What uh, was this bargain that was struck? Well, Zimmer and Pat explained that they were going to let me in on their operations, provided I gave them a free hand. <laughs> they even offered to pay me $200 a month to leave them be. You accept it? Let me finish. Mm hmm they told me that if I tried to stop them, there was nothing surer than that I'd be killed. And the secret that Pat was an outlaw would be let out to everyone in town, especially old rancher Ralston, so that he'd never let his son marry Julie. And, Marshal, I didn't care much about myself, but I did want Julie to have happiness more than anything else in the world. So you agreed? Well, I felt I had to, Marshal. I can understand, Sheriff. Only when I had time to think, I realized I was doing the wrong thing, and... I thought of a way to trap Zimmer and his gang, and I've been putting it into practice. Was it? How? Well, I've carried out their instructions. Helped them all I can, as you probably saw this afternoon. Yeah. But I've been keeping an eye on them all. Even though I didn't know all the members of the gang when Zimmer started up here, now I know most of them. I know who's got the stolen silver ingots and the Russell cattle. I've mm. been telling folks all along that I would get their goods back. Yeah, I heard that. But it appears some of them didn't believe me. What was your plan? Well, once I found out who most of them were, I made plans to trap them all, or as many as possible, in the one place at the one time. I've arranged for a large shipment of ingots to go on out of the Wells Fargo coach tomorrow. Yeah. And I've told him to have all his boys waiting out along the trail to expect it. Mm. I told him he'd need nearly all his men to carry the ingots away. I've told him there'll, there'll only be two guards. Two guards, you see. Mm. And I'm making sure the coach is full of fellas, fellas I can trust. And I'm hoping that, well, we'll round up the whole gang. Well, Sheriff, that's right smart. I guess you've got a few apologies coming, the first one from me. And you got one coming from me for the way I treated you. Think nothing of it. Well, what now? You gonna let my secret out? Nope. The only thing I'm doing is applying for a place in that Wells Fargo coach tomorrow. I guess you'll all be glad to know the sheriff's plan worked to perfection. Zimmer had all his men out along the trail, ambushed the coach, but sure got a surprise and he found it empty of silver and full of men. The sheriff shot his son, Pat, in the gun battle that followed, and it seemed a great weight had been lifted from his mind. The only sad thing about the whole business was the sheriff's face when he lost his daughter to Rancher Ralston's son a couple of months later. And I guess any man feels a mite sad when he gives his daughter away.
Join us again next week as Matt Morgan fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Gunsmoke is written by Russ Ryder and produced by Jim Bradley for our transit.